Although the board of Celtic Football Club has tonight been dismantled, according to a spokesman for Deputy Chairman David Smith, he and fellow board members Michael Kelly and Chris White have been ousted after Chairman Kevin Kelly said the board had been misled about the scale of the club's financial problems. Kevin Kelly remains a director, as do Tom Grant, Jim Farrell and Jack McGinn. Former banker Dominic Keane joins the team. Millionaire Fergus McCann is said to have been appointed as Celtic's chief executive. Hazel, you put a nice quiet day to come back to the programme. I certainly did, Rob, yes. Last Friday came the historic announcement from Celtic that they were going public and had a cash commitment to build a new stadium at Canvas Lang. All that's now been submerged under the news that the Celtic board is being taken apart and that the ownership of the club is being taken over by exiled Scott Fergus McCann. Chick Young has this report. Fergus McCann, Celtic's new chief executive, touched down at Glasgow Airport today. Jet-lagged but clearly delighted at the news that his long battle to gain control of the club was turning his way. Meanwhile, Brian Dempsey was sweeping back into Celtic Park after his salvage mission with the bank last night. Vice Chairman David Smith, whose resignation had been demanded by Kevin Kelly and Jack McGinn, was on his way to meet him, still blaming the players for the slump in Celtic's fortunes. Things were uh, going along relatively smoothly as far as the uh, finances of the club were concerned. In fact, some were better than we had anticipated until, uh, I should think, the first uh, two minutes of New Year's Day, plus a uh, cup tie at Motherwell didn't uh, help things at all. I certainly haven't misled the board. And, uh, didn't think. In fact, uh, I was at pains to point out the, the position to the board. Indeed, I asked the Bank of Scotland representative to come to the board meeting uh, to make it clear how the interim position and uh, you know how there was a situation between now and raising further money that uh, the board had to be aware of and had to be aware of the bank's view. So I actually called the, the bank to the board meeting to make sure that the directors were aware of it. But while the future of Smith and fellow directors Chris White and Michael Kelly was being discussed at Parkhead, Elsewhere in the city, Gerald Weisfeld, his stepson Michael MacDonald and Willie Hockey were meeting to underline their continuing interest in developments. Weisfeld sold his What Every Woman Wants clothes store chain for £52 million and is still desperate to invest in Celtic despite McCann's victory in the takeover battle. Friday sports scene can reveal tonight that he will seek face-to-face -face talks with Fergus McCann. Mr Dempsey and Mr McCann um, could have control of the club by the end of the day. And that's obviously something we would be delighted about. So where does that leave you and Gerald and, and Willie Hockey, assuming you still want to put some involvement into Celtic? Well, again, I mean, uh, I can only uh, speak for myself, but I believe that Gerald would uh, um, have talks, serious talks, with Brian and Fergus. I, don't, I think there's no question of that. That would seem to be the actual crux of the matter here. Can we get Gerald Wisefield and your group with Fergus McCann locked in a room together? Unquestionably. I think there is no problem with that at all. Um, there's always been a united front. Um, I think there will certainly be talks taking place, but whether anything will develop from those talks is an, uh, another question. Last week, Brian Dempsey met with Willie Hockey to underline their joint effort to remove the board. But Willie Hockey is a happy man despite being on the outside of today's events. We've got to wait and see what Brian and Fergus have to say. Um, obviously, they've been successful in getting control of the club. Again, to reiterate to all the fans out there, it's never been a race. We've, we've all wanted the same goal, and now we've got it. We just have to wait and see if the major players can play together. If they thought that we had anything to offer, or I had anything to offer, I'd be delighted to work with them. If Brian Dempsey and Fergus McCann uh, achieve their ambition and step in here, would you be happy to walk away with, at the end of the day, nothing? Oh, yes. Oh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, well, everyone who's seen my interview last week and seen my face today, I've got what I came in for. The board are gone. So what, what part do you have to play now as well, you understand? Uh, all I'm saying is I was willing, my, I was offering money to the board to put in to get rid of the board and obviously the work I was then going to put in with Gerald and Michael. If Fergus and Brian think they've got anything to offer, I'll be delighted to talk to them. Meanwhile, Dominic Keane has within the last hour met the Celtic fans for the first time as a director and has immediately asked them for their support. I hope, I hope they do. Would you look forward to now to a bit of peace and stability in, within the I'm club? I'm sure all the fans will now get behind Fergus and Brian, and that's the way forward. We've always known that's the way what forward. What will be your role in the new setup? Well, hopefully with my uh, financial expertise from my days uh, in banking, I was 21 years in the banking business, that I can bring that uh, financial stability 
uh, to help Fergus and Brian. Yes, that was new director Dominic Keane speaking on the steps of Celtic Park just a short time ago. Two of Celtic's most experienced players have given their reaction to the big boardroom changes. Well, what I, I believe is uh, we're getting somebody like Brian Dempsey and he's a very true Celt and he's a very honest man. And I think the Celtic supporters, there's no guarantee we're going to get immediate success, but uh, they'll, they'll be guaranteed a man who's going to work for the cause with Celtic. And I think Celtic supporters are looking now for honesty and a bit of integrity, and this man will provide that. I don't have any doubts on that, on that side. I think it's come to the crunch now, and we're delighted something's getting done because uh, it'll clear up the situation once and for all, and that's what we're after. There's a bunch of players we've got to get out there in the park and get a crowd behind us and, and start winning games again. It must have been. Chick Young joins me now, having studied events at Parkhead this afternoon. Chick, Messrs, Smith, Kelly and White ousted from the board, allegedly having misled the rest of the directors on financial affairs. What could they have done that, that made the rest of the directors turn against them so quickly and so fiercely? Quite simply, if the allegations are correct, Rob, what they did, the, the financial comings and goings at Celtic Park, they just had to go. Frankly, I think today's uh, events are the thin end of the wedge. I think there'll be more sweeping changes within the Celtic boardroom. I'd expect the next director to be named. Remember, we already have Ferguson Bacan in position as chief executive. Alongside him, Dominic Keane, who we just heard speaking. He is the brother of Edmund Keane, who is, has a lot of money, who lives in the Bahamas. And he obviously will be the front man for his brother from, from over there. I expect them to be joined in the next few days by Glasgow solicitor Len Murray. He will be the third part in all of this. Yes, three of the, the board have gone, but more than half, four are still there. Uh, Kevin Kelly, Tom Grant, Jack McGinn and James Farrell. Uh, some would say half the problems are still are there. The fans will be saying that. I've left a lot of fans gathered outside Celtic Park within the last hour or so, and they're calling this uh, the best day at Celtic Park since they won the European Cup in 1967. They think it's a great day after all the crazy days in paradise they've had recently. But we have to say here, there's a, there's a queue of millionaires. We talk about fan power in the game. The millionaires are queuing up to help Celtic now. We heard Gerald Weisfeld's son-in-law, his sorry, stepson, say that he wants to put money into the club. There's a lot of money to be invested in Celtic, and I don't believe that in the fullness of time, the rest of the directors will withstand this hurricane of change that's sweeping through Celtic. Dominic Keane spoke there about his banking background. Can he be seen as almost a straight replacement for David Smith in terms of financial know-how? I think they want someone like that into play, and I think they want uh, Len Murray to come in to help them in the legal matters, because obviously it's deeply involved, and everyone was being care very careful what they said. Brian Dempsey, for me, has been the catalyst in all of this. He's done superbly well. I think at the end of the day, he will end up as chairman of Celtic. Chief Executive Fergus McCann, they're very close. Celtic today, a changing place, and I think there'll be hurricanes hurricane wind of change to come through, it's still to come. In previous attempts at getting control, Fergus McCann mentioned the figure of £18 million. Pounds. Is that the sort of order of investment he's putting in now? That was unclear today exactly how much money. He said that money would, was going to be taken away. He brought it back in. He's come back across the Atlantic at, at, at hours' notice. Uh, it is now the, there's now the intention of Dempsey to get Weisfield uh, and the Fergus McCann to sit down together and to bring that money united into the club. And what a power Celtic would be if that could happen. And I understand, speaking to the fans out at Celtic Park, that is what they want, to bring Celtic obviously as a power in the game, but to be a rich power to compete against the blue shadow of Ibrox under which they're living at the moment. The battle.